let's spend a little bit of time talking about bond energies and bond lengths. This is on the homework. Um, there's not a great deal of it that I'm going to put on the test, but it is, it is important because it's related to heat. So bond energy is always positive because it takes energy to break a bond. So bond energy is always positive. And then if you have a stronger bond, it's gonna take more energy. So let's get back to thinking about single, double, and triple bonds. Which ones are the longest ones? Single bonds. Which ones are the shortest ones? Triple bonds. Which ones are the strongest ones? Triple bonds. So as you add more bonds between two atoms, they get shorter and stronger. So it takes more energy. Now, you can use average bond energy in order to estimate enthalpy changes. And you do this very similarly to a Hess's, uh, not a Hess's law, um, an enthalpy calculation from, standard, from a standard table. So you would be given a table that says, you know, an OH bond, an OO bond, an O double bond O, and there'll be so much like kilojoules of energy. So very much like when you're calcul when you it's plug and chug. So you count up how many bonds that you break, and then you add how many bonds that you form. So you know what's changed. So if you have a big molecule, but you only break one bond and make one new bond, that's all you have to count. So bond breaking is endothermic because it's positive, because it takes energy to break the bond. When you form bonds, atoms get more stable. So bond making is exothermic. So bonds broken, that's going to be positive, and the bonds formed are going to be negative. So you can say, oh, well, is this going to be more likely to happen? Well, if delta H of the reaction is positive, it's going to require some heat for this reaction to happen. If it's negative, it's going to release heat. So you have to, you just, you, you draw your structures, so you have to draw your Lewis structure, count up the bonds that are going to be changing, the ones that you're going to break, add them up, then add up how many bonds you're forming, they'll be negative, add those up. This is also something that you will be doing in organic. We'll be doing something similar to this in 180 as well. So bond length. Remember, shorter bonds are stronger. So remember, the, that would be our double and our triple bonds. Let's go ahead and briefly talk about metallic bonds. We had ionic, covalent, and metallic. So bonding in metals, this is called the electron C. This is a bit of a, uh, what should I call it? Um, maybe a mental exercise. It, it's, it's a little bit out there and kind of nebulous for me. But we know that metals lose electrons because metals form positive cations. That's, a, that's redundant. Positive ions. Metals make cations. Metals have positive charges. They lose electrons. They are oxidized. Oxidation is lost. So when metals bond together to each other, they donate these electrons that they're losing to this overall what they call the electron C. And so this is sort of like a giant resonance, but we don't draw it as such. What it means is the electrons, they don't belong to any single particular atom in this metal bonding. So the electrons 
are just kind of all out here floating around. And then you've got your metal, this is a generic M for metal, and it's positive, and the electrons are just kind of moving around it to stabilize it. So, metals, one of the characteristics of metals is that it's a good conductor of electricity. So, why would that happen? Well, that would be very likely to happen because in this C here, all these electrons are free to move. And then metals also conduct heat. Good conductors of heat and electricity. These are good properties of metals because these mobile electrons are really good at dispersing thermal energy. So they move, the electrons move freely. As they're moving, they disperse thermal energy. That would be heat. And metals are malleable and ductile or one is you can pull it into a rope, the other is you can hammer it into a sheet. Because there are no localized or specific bonds, like an ionic compound, where is that, that rigid lattice crystal structure, or in a covalent bond, which we'll talk about how those are shaped. So, because there's they're just all kind of all floating out within this electron C. These metal ions, they can just slide on past one another. So you can hammer out to as thin of a sheet as you want. So they just slide past, past each other. So you can think of these as like surfboards, buoys in a water. Maybe that's a good mental image for you. Not entirely sure. But you can come up with, with a, something that that works as an image for you but scientists call it the electron c but again the main point of this chapter lewis structures